mga kadalog at amazing, welcome to the Lub at Amazing TV. This is Victor Millian from Santa Teresita National High School, Santa Teresita District, Division of Cagayan. If you are new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe, like and share, and click the notification bell for more video updates. Are you ready, Kadalub Act Amazing? If yes, get a piece of paper and your pen and take down important details. This video differentiates plants and animal cells according to presence and absence of organelles. In our previous video, we discussed about the levels of biological organization. Can you still remember the first level of biological organization? Yes, you are correct. Cell is the first level. But what is a cell? Where do we find cell? A cell is a basic unit of structure and function of life. In other words, cell makes up living things and carry out activities that keep a living things alive. History time! I am sure you are all asking yourselves, who was the first person to look at cells? Well, thanks for asking. I will tell you. In the 1660s, there was a man named Robert Cook. Robert lived in Britain and was a scientist. He was the first person to observe cells. Robert took a piece of bark from an old oak tree and looked at it through a microscope. The bark looked like it was made up of many small rooms, kind of like a house with many bedrooms. He named the rooms or structures he saw under the microscope cells. This is how the word cell came to be. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Let's talk about the first structure, the cell membrane, or also known as plasma membrane, fence or a gatekeeper that protects the cell from the outside environment, encapsulates the contents of the cell. It is also controls what materials can go in and out of the cell. It is made up of two layers of phospholipids or phospholipid bilayer. Let's move on to the second structure, the nucleus. It houses the oxyribonucleic acid or DNA, protein, and nucleus. It is also considered as the brain of the cell or the control center of the cell. Lastly, the cytoplasm, where all the organelles are located. It is jelly-like fluid, material between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Let's move on to the different organelles. First organelle that we are going to discuss is the mitochondria, or mitochondrion in plural forms. It is one of the largest organelles of the cell. It is also known as the powerhouse of the cell, since it is where the energy of the cell, the adenosine triphosphate, is produced. Let's move on to the second organelles, the ribosomes. It is a tiny organelle look like dots that contain ribonucleic acids or RNA and specific proteins within the cytoplasm. It is also involved manufacture of proteins. Another organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum or ER. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is named so because of ribosomes in its surface. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the opposite. Since the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes, it is involved in the manufacture of proteins and responsible for the transportation of protein. On the other hand, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the synthesis of lipids like phospholipids, which are used to build the cell membrane. Other function of a smooth endoplasmic reticulum involve metabolism of carbohydrates and enzyme production in the liver and contraction of muscle cells in the muscles.
Another organelle is the Golgi apparatus. It is responsible for transporting, modifying, and packaging proteins and lipids into vesicles for delivering to targeted destinations. It is located in the cytoplasm next to the endoplasmic reticulum and near the cell nucleus. Did you know that cells also produce space? In the cytoplasm, structures like lysosome contain chemicals that digest waste and burn out or damage cell parts. Lysosomes act as a waste disposal system of the cell by digesting obsolete or unused materials in the cytoplasm. Thus, lysosomes are also known called suicidal bags of the cell. Lastly is the vacuum. The vacuole may be described as a space inside the cell that does not contain plasma membrane, surrounded by membrane and filled with fluid. Vacuoles for more various molecules, including enzymes, waste products of the cell, water, even food material, depending on the type of the cell. All right, Kaag, amazing! Let's energize your brain. Let's do the Where Do I Belong activity. There are two circles that overlap each other, the animal cell and the plant cell. Look at the list of structures in the box. If a structure can be found only in animal cell, write the name of the structure in the parts of the animal cell circle that does not interact with the other circle. If the structure can be found in both plants and animal cells, write the name of the structure in the overlapping parts of the circles. If a structure can be found only in plant cell, write the name of the structures in the plant cell circle that does not overlap the other circle. Are you ready? Very good! Let's see if you got the correct answer. Congratulations, Kaag Amazing! You get all the correct answers. Five stars for that! And now, let's talk about the similarities and differences of plant cell and animal cell. Both plants and animal cells contain membrane-bound organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria. However, plant cell and animal cells do not look exactly the same or have all of the same organelles since each of them have different needs. So how plants and animal cells similar or different? Why do plants and animal cells have differences? Plant and animal cell differ because they must perform different functions. Both animal and plant cells have mitochondria, but only plant cells have chloroplasts. Plants do not get their sugar from eating food, so they need to make sugar with the help of the sunlight. These processes, known as photosynthesis, takes place in the chloroplast. Both plants and animal cells have vacuoles. A plant cell contains a large singular vacuole that is used for storage and maintaining the shape of the cell. In contrast, animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Both plants and animal cells have a cell membrane, but only plant cells have a cell wall. In plant cells, the cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. This gives the plant cell its box-like shape. This also allows plants to remain strong and stand upright even if they grow to great heights. Lysosomes are found in nearly every animal cell. They are common in animal cells because when animal cells take in or absorb food, they need the enzymes found in lysosomes that digest and use the food for energy. On the other hand, lysosomes are not commonly found in plant cells. Lysosomes are not needed in plant cells because they have cell walls that are tough enough to keep large or foreign substances that lysosomes would usually digest out of the cell. Lastly, we have the centrosome. The centrosome is the microtubule, organizing center found near the nuclei of an animal cell. It contains a pair of centrions, two structures that lie perpendicular to each other, 
the centrosome replicates itself before cell divides and the centrioles appear to have some role in pulling the duplicated chromosomes to opposite ends of the dividing cell. Alright gag, amazing! As a recap, here are all the organelles that we talked about. Can you still remember the basic structures of plant cell and animal cell? Okay, very good! So the first one is the nucleus, the second one is the cytoplasm, and the last one is the cell membrane. Within the cytoplasm are the organelles, which are the mitochondria, the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, the vacuoles, the cell membrane, and Golgi apparatus. Now, here is a table comparing the structures found in plant and animal cell. Plant cells have a singular large vacuole, while animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Plant cells have chloroplasts in cell wall, while animal cells don't. Lysosomes are rarely present in plant cells but are present in almost every animal cell. And lastly, animal cells have a centrosome while plant cells do not. Alright Kag, amazing! That's all for now. I hope you've learned a lot in this video. Until next time, once again, this is Teacher Milian, your science teacher from Santa Teresita National High School, Santa Teresita District, Division of Cagayan. Bye-bye!